So let's look at two ways that you can convert MIDI into audio in Ableton Live. And this is gonna help you if you need to save some CPU because you're getting dropouts. And it's also gonna help you share project files between different computers that don't have all the same plugins. So we're gonna look at two different ways. The first way is gonna work if you want to convert just one MIDI track into an audio file like this pad here. And the second way is gonna work if you want to convert multiple MIDI tracks like this set of drums, for example, into just one audio file. So let's say I want to convert this pad into just an audio file. And the reason I want to do that, if you look at the CPU when I play this, it's spiking up to around 30, 33%, which is quite a lot for the Mac that I'm running. It's quite a powerful machine. So let's have a look. So what I can do is right click on this track and go to freeze track. And you can also do the same by selecting the track and going to the edit menu and selecting freeze track. So now you can see that this pad track has a kind of blue overlay and that means that it's been frozen. So what does that mean? Well, essentially it means that the plugins that I was using, so I'm using Serum, which is a synthesizer to make this pad sound. And then I've got some EQ, saturation, etc. Instead of playing the virtual instrument and the MIDI file and all the plugins every time I play back, which is what it normally would do if it was unfrozen, uh, Ableton has created an audio file under the hood for this track, which when I hit play in a second, it's gonna play that audio file. It's not playing through Serum and all of these plugins. So you'll remember my CPU was sitting at around 30 to 33% uh, when I played back before freezing this track. Let's have a look at what it does now. So we've reduced the CPU from about 30% down to 10%, which is a really, really good improvement. Now you've got two options from here. You can either right click and unfreeze the track if you want to start making changes to this synth, or you can flatten. Now flatten is gonna take that audio file and it's going to get rid of Serum, all of the plugins. It's gonna turn this MIDI track into an audio track. You've essentially just bounced what you've done and committed to it going forward. So let's hit flatten. There we go. We've now got this audio file and it's even left the reverb tail at the end for us. And this is now just an audio track. I can't get back to Serum. I can't make any changes to the plugins, etc. You can see that it's sort of bouncing the waveform with the sidechain that I had on there. This is really great if you want to commit to what you've done and move forwards. Now let's look at method number two, which is gonna allow you to take multiple MIDI tracks like these drums and convert them to an audio file without having to export. This is great for doing exactly what I'm doing just here, condensing your drums down into one audio file. Uh, it's also really good for if you're sending stems off for a remix. To do this, we're gonna be using something called resampling inside Ableton. And essentially what that allows you to do is record Live's master output back into an audio track. Now make sure you follow these steps quite closely. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is right click and create an audio track. This is where we're going to record the drums into. And then what we want to do is where you see external in here, I'm gonna select resampling. Now, if you don't see uh, sort of this section on the right, then you can come back to the session view and you'll see it in here and you should be able to change it there. Next, make sure that the monitor is set to off, which it should be by default. And we're gonna record arm this track. Then what we're gonna do is solo the drums. Now, when I hit play, we should see audio coming into this track. Okay, so it is grayed out and that's because we've got the monitor set to off, otherwise we'd be hearing it twice. Um, but essentially what we can do now is just hit record and you'll see that it's gonna record just the drums into this audio track for us to use. So let's do that now. Okay, 
Okay, so I won't do the whole thing, but you get the idea there. You can see that we've got just the drums recorded into this audio file. So let's unsolo this and let's solo just that recording that we took there. Now the super observant among you may have recognized that the first kick drum sounds a little bit strange. It sounds a little bit duller and not quite as punchy as the rest of the kick drums. There's a reason for that. Ableton has this automatic thing where it puts a fade on the start of all of your audio files. So let's go right into the front of this audio file. I'm pressing plus to zoom in. And there we go, you can see that fade there, which is just taking the attack off of the front of the kick drum, which isn't what we want. So we can just use this handle to pull that fade back and we've got that nice snappy attack back at the start of the kick drum. Let's have a listen to that. So there we go, I hope that's been helpful for you. And if you want to learn Ableton Live in a little bit more depth, and learn how to create tracks that DJs are gonna play and labels are gonna sign, then I'd highly recommend that you check out my Ableton Accelerator course in the description down below this video. Thanks again for spending a bit of time with me today and I hope to see you again soon. Take care.